vehicles far enough to drive on the road, uh, to make them safe enough to drive on the road. And the next step, of course, is trying to figure out, you know, what do you do with it once you've got there. Uh, so this is a, a little video we put together to kind of to show a concept. So the idea is that transportation should become, you know, a, a service. It should become ubiquitous. That you can basically sit in your office, decide you want to go somewhere, and call get go get the uh, the really awesome golf cart to rip out and uh, and give you a ride where you need to go. So here they are pulling out of our garage. She decides she's got a meeting she's got to get to. They're driving away. These vehicles are obviously much less expensive than our Priuses. They uh, integrate with off-board sensors in the environment to see oncoming traffic and whatnot so they can get the same level of sensing we need but without having to put, you know, however much we put on the Priuses. Um, here he is waiting for his car. At this point, now he has transportation. So in this case, you know, he can just drive. Uh, he gets it and he goes where he wants to go. Cuts off somebody in a way. <laughs> She's still waiting, but now the vehicle's here just when she expects it. She is able to hop out again, get in, and get off to her meeting. She can follow the instructions so she understands how to operate the vehicle and how it should work. And uh, you can tell she's very busy because she has a computer, cell phone, and red jacket. Um, and so she's able to sit in the car, and as she's driving where she's going, uh, just you know, do her work. They clearly enjoy the golf cart driving experience. <laughs> and then they get where they're going, they badge out, and off the vehicles go, they go help somebody else. So this is one way we see in the, in the future that this technology can actually be brought to bear to actually make transportation better, make it more efficient, and have people get where they need to go. Turn back to Sebastian here to close things up. So I want to come back to the theme I, uh, I talked about at the beginning, because uh, it's been important to me and to the entire team. Um, and slide. Um, uh, to Savan, um, to me, like to indicate, uh, this presentation, but also for many people um, who saw a similar face. Um, there's so many ways in which I believe this technology can be transformed in society. Uh, transportation is second biggest expense for most of us. It's a major thing. It takes about an hour of day for the average American to go to and from work. There's an hour of time lost in my books for most people. And there's many ways in which self-driving technology can be transformed our society as a whole. I give you something that I'm not quite as obvious as saving lives and saving medical expenses. Uh, one has to do with highway capacity. If you take a uh, highway at what's called peak capacity, which is has the highest throughput in the United States, and you go about 55 miles per hour, and if dense traffic is shown here, but the traffic is still rolling, otherwise the capacity goes down. And you ask yourself, how well are you exploiting all this infrastructure you pay for called highway? It turns out there's an interesting number that most people don't realize, which is an empty, a full highway, fully capacitated highway, is empty. Um, if you were to take this aerial photo of a highway and paint all the cars red and all the space in between green, you cover between six and eight percent of the real estate of the cars. That could be seen as a waste because we seen as an opportunity. The reason why we have so much space between cars is because, by and large, we are lousy drivers. We're not good at keeping our center line of the lane, we need about twice as wide lanes of cars. We need a lot of space in front of us because we are slow and reacting, and it's getting worse by the advent of texting on highways. <laughs> it's relatively easy to build self driving technology that makes car drive in a more precise way and closer together. If you only were to increase uh, utilization from, say, 8% to 16%, will still be 84% empty if you double the capacity of the highway system. So while this is not technology we can make happen tomorrow morning, because it's a certain penetration of this technology to work out, there's just a vision here on which we can make our transportation system much more efficient. There's additional benefits from doing this. You can exploit wind drag. You see Berkeley has shown that for trucks, the wind drag reduction uh, can lead to a, a, a gas reduction of about 21% by just using the wind of the truck in front of you. Uh, you can reduce um, traffic jams. You're wasting this nation alone 4.5 billion gallons of gas a year and just the traffic jams to the waiting. And that's the problem's going to get worse, not better. 
uh, there's a, an annual increase of traffic by 3% without any new highway construction <coughs> or any measure. So we are going through disaster and are beyond disaster in many urban areas. There's uh, way too many cars. I think Chris really alluded to this very nicely when he talked about the caddy program. The intent here was to understand to what extent can you make cars a shared resource, very much like zip cars a shared resource. Now, the problem with existing uh, resource sharing and rental car and zip car is that you basically have to go to that place where the car is. And if you live in a uh, suburban neighborhood, that might be a long walk for you. What, what we've built is a prototype system that you ran in Google for a while, where the car, the vehicle, would just come to you. Uh, you all, and so most of you, own cars. And if I ask what your cars are doing right now, they're quite all parked somewhere. You might have a rental car, so you have two cars occupied right now. It turns out the average American uses their car about 3% of the lifetime. It's parked 97 of the lifetime. The parking uh, causes additional churn on the economy because you have to pay for parking spaces. A new parking garage at Google runs between $60,000 and $100,000 per parking spot. There's a huge amount of waste, so opportunity for us to do much better. We just rethink traffic as a whole. Without having to change any infrastructure, we don't have to put new rails in, new, new train tracks in, and so on. Just to make cars smart. I want to say one last thing. This is a picture we uh, got from Virginia Tech. Um, and that really talks about their experiments uh, to make cars accessible, transportation accessible to people who currently can't afford it or can't help for medical reasons, such as the aging population or, as shown in this picture, a blind person. Virginia Tech has shown that a blind person is able to drive again with self driving car technology, which I find very remarkable. There's a huge number of us, be it children, be it aging people, be it people with Parkinson's, blindness, and other efficiencies and illnesses that would really benefit from the ability to get around. Uh, we are started talking a little bit to, to various uh, members of the Black Association and the AARP, and you would not imagine more desperation exists in these circles for technology like the ones that we as roboticists jointly can, can provide. With this, I'd like to um, close the talk, give you one last remark. Um, just recently, a lot of the press, the state of Nevada, has understood our vision and has installed legislation that, for the first time in history, renders a South driving car, which is legal, but gives it special privileges. This is part of the Nona bill. I had it in blue, I changed it just passed. Um, in this specific instance, we can use self driving cars to legally text, which is one of the concerns that no one had at the time. So if you text while driving, which I'm sure most of you one way or another have done, I certainly have. Um, this was certainly, uh, certainly, certainly uh, given new dimension. But what's really important here is the landmark legislation in the United States to redefine what is a self driving car and give it a role in traffic so we, the technologists, can deliver. There is a positive perception for what we do. I think this will help really influence other states and the federal government and possibly other countries in understanding how to fit this technology uh, into the existing traffic scheme. With that, I'd like to close. Thank you for your attention. I'd like to thank my team and our team. We have a fantastic team of 15 engineers several on the corner over there. Um, and uh, I'd like to thank Google for the courage to support us and open the forum for questions. Thank you.